Another big interest rate hike is expected to be announced when the Federal Reserve Board meets tomorrow. Uh, the meeting comes ahead of the October jobs report, which is due out on Friday. So for more on this, I want to bring in Javier David. He is the managing editor of business and markets at Axios. So, Javier, I mean, the thing about this Fed is they never really leave you guessing. Like they have a tendency, <laughs> you know, the chair has a tendency to broadcast ahead of time what's sure. coming. Yeah. So I, so then I will ask you, what can we expect from this meeting? We can expect at a minimum another 75 basis point okay. hike. This is about the fourth or fifth consecutive one, mm -hmm. the sort of jumbo size hike that we've gotten. Mm -hmm. uh, the Federal Reserve has indicated that even though the financial markets have been sort of trying to bully them into pivoting um, or not to pivoting in terms of uh, an easing, but at right. least signaling that we're OK, this part of the campaign is coming close to an end. Yeah. And I'm being very deliberate with my words because I don't want anyone to get the impression that the Federal Reserve is going to do something no. that it is not going to do. And what it has signaled it is not going to do is stop before they feel the job is done in terms of inflation. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I, I, I know it's a tough thing to predict. But I, I, a part of me is like, well, well, can we wait till the ripple effect kicks in? Mm. But I, I guess they must know you can't wait too long. Right. And the, the, the monetary policy operates with the lag. So primarily, what have we seen this year, I think, in the order of 300 mm -hmm. basis points? It's like three full percentage points at a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, it's still making its way through the system. And what people fear is that the Fed is cr sort of over tightening and has, is, is running the risk mm -hmm. of creating a policy error that's going to sort of ground the economy, um, send it into an, a recessionary tailspin. Um, and that's a very real concern. Um, and it's a very valid concern. Yeah, which is worse, high inflation or a recession? recession. I don't know. Yeah, they both yeah. sound, seem pretty painful. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of inflation, I heard something that I thought was really interesting, and I hope you can shed some light on it. The last inflation report that we got, we saw inflation is not where the Fed wants it to be. They, they want the inflation to be at 2%. But I thought it was really interesting because we often talk about goods when it comes to inflation, that it's going to cost you more to mm -hmm. buy food, but not about services. Mm -hmm. But there was inflation when it came to services, which mm -hmm. means your hairdresser, perhaps, mm -hmm. don't know, <laughs> you, go. Uh, uh, you know, and anybody else who does anything for you, mm -hmm. they're also getting paid more. Mm -hmm. And that's not good for inflation. Well, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone in this economy is paying more for something. And when you think of a service provider, you have to think of the idea that whatever it costs them to run their business, it's costing them more. Mm -hmm. And so how do you do that? You Some people will say, okay, it's not that much more. I'll absorb the cost. I'll eat it. Some um, of the bigger, larger service providers mm -hmm. or goods and service providers will eat the cost. Mm -hmm. But some of them, they're smaller, hairdresser, a barber, people that provide these services, they can't afford to do that. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They pass it along in terms of higher costs. And, and we pay it. And you have to pay it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we've seen to date is people are continuing to pay these higher prices. Yeah. And this is what's got the Fed so concerned because by this point in the cycle, you normally see people pulling back. And the, there are indications that the consumer is getting a little bit tired, but um, between credit card spending and higher wages, people are finding a way to manage this mm. inflationary environment that we're in. And that is, a, you know, an ongoing concern for policy. Now I want to broaden it a little bit uh, out beyond our borders here. You know, we talked about the economy in Germany and the guy we talked to yesterday said, hey, you know, when Germany sneezes, <laughs> Europe gets a cold because <laughs> of the interconnection. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge And economy. Europe's largest economy. Absolutely. And, right. So I wonder about about the U.S., you know, is the rest of the world watching what the Fed does? And Absolutely. can it have an impact on other economies as it, well? It, it, well, it already is. Uh, and, and the primary exponent of that is the U.S. dollar. The dollar is has come off a little bit, but it's at its highest levels in decades. Mm. This is a tightening effect for other countries um, mm. that, you know, our currency trade, well, how their our currency trades against theirs, mm -hmm. their currencies are pretty weak now. So that's actually, on, on one level, it's a boost for their exports. So if you're an economy that sort of ships things abroad a lot, mm -hmm. um, and Germany is actually one of those economies. Mm -hmm. So the euro's weakness actually helps them in an economic way. But it, it's also inflationary because the last thing you need in an inflationary environment, and everybody in Europe just reported 10 Point seven, almost 11% inflation last right. week. Um, the last thing you need is a weak currency. That also helps to feed inflation, even though you'll get a competitive boost to your exports. Wow. Uh, uh, Javier, of course, I always learned something when you were here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely.